Hi everyone. How do you build a digitally resilient enterprise? This is the goal that most organizations are pursuing today. In the next 30 minutes, I'm going to share actionable insights that based on our research will help you achieve that goal. I'm Daniel Zoe Jimenez, and I lead digital transformation research at IDC Asia Pacific. Do you know that there are 464 unicorns worldwide? A unicorn is a company with a valuation of more than 1 billion US dollars. Out of the 464, almost half are in the US alone. And within Asia, China has 119, while Europe has only 54, considering its population size and market maturity. The reason why I wanted to share this with you is because with all the hype and marketing around digital transformation, I think that we've lost sight as to why companies are transforming and why they need to continue to transform. And they are digitally transforming because traditional organizations have seen these unicorns showing up in their industry and they recognize that these startups are operating very differently than they were and they were developing competitive advantage and disrupting their industries. So as a result, incumbent organizations realized that they needed to transform. What is clear is that we need to innovate at a rate much higher than we've been doing today. We need to be a company that is much more customer centric. Also, we need to embrace risk. And more importantly, we need to use technologies like AI, IoT, and many others to create this competitive advantage for our organizations. So as unicorns come into the marketplace, they disrupt the industries, and we all have seen these companies like Uber, Grab, Deliveroo, and many others. But leaving aside these unicorns, there are thousands of disruptors across all industries, as you can see on the screen. So traditional organizations or incumbents have increased focus on transforming processes, operations, and customer relationships to compete. Doing so requires making significant changes and often taking a data-driven type of approach, infusing intelligence into their businesses. So for organizations like TBS, a bank that has won numerous accolades worldwide for being one of the most progressive digital banks in the world, it has been around how do we become more data-driven from a leadership and cultural perspective? So particularly when you look at IT, they changed their benchmark. So instead of measuring their success of their technology initiatives against their peers, they would benchmark those against leaders in the technology industry, particularly internet giants, like those in the candle acronym, which stands for Google, Amazon, Netflix, Apple, LinkedIn, and of course, Facebook. So, if we all aspire to get our organizations to become technology companies, our benchmark and metrics should change. So for example, when DBS wants to measure the success of their analytics and recommendation initiatives, they will benchmark those against Netflix. Or when they want to ensure that their initiatives allow for continuous uh, learning of social engagement, they will do so or compare so against uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. But also, Another fundamental uh, thing has been changing their metrics and of course their balance performance scorecard. And this is uh, because if we want to drive a change in culture, you need to ensure that this permeates across the entire organization. So if one person in your company says something or does something, that's what we call an opinion, right? But uh, when everyone in your organization uh, essentially concurs and says the same thing and acts in the same way, that's what we call the company culture. So a fundamental shift comes with the introduction of new metrics, KPIs that can allow for the entire workforce to drive and buy in into big cultural changes in the organization. So if you look at the screen, they build a three-tier type of system, splitting the metrics across financial metrics, platform-related initiatives, and strategic uh, initiatives, all of them related to digital transformation. So DBS is, of course, a good example of how an incumbent has driven successful change and transformation. And there are many other organizations worldwide that are successfully transforming and effectively competing against these disruptors in the digital marketplace. However, 
the reality is that disruption does not only come in the form of unicorns or digital disruptors. If you think about it, from natural disasters to political turmoil and health outbreaks, today has become more clear than ever that we all need to be better prepared for increasing levels of risk and business disruption. The current crisis is affecting us all, severely impacting public health and the global economy. Organizations of all sizes across industries are grappling with the increasing levels of risk that are impacting work, the workforce, the workplace, supply chains, and even, of course, customers. And what is clear is that we need to be resilient. While failure is natural, what is important is our ability to quickly learn from that failure, adapt, and rebound fast. In fact, our research indicates that what distinguishes DX leaders or digital transformation leaders from the rest is their ability to quickly adapt to change and be resilient. Digital resilient organizations are agile, unable to adapt to maintain their core business purpose and integrity when facing dramatic circumstances. To do so, they infuse intelligence into processes and create autonomy in their operations, as well as focus on driving continuous innovation while becoming an empathetic enterprise. The reality is that there cannot be business as usual after this crisis. IT and business processes must become leaner more agile and more automated. Existing organizations, or existing organizational and management models, as well as IT operating concepts, must be put to the test. Of course, and that has, ha that has to happen in the short term. So resiliency is not only about eliminating or minimizing potential business risk, but also ensuring your organization can adequately respond to any unforeseen changes with minimal impact to the business. Becoming digitally resilient requires fundamental changes to our processes, operations, and business models. All of these is driving changes to CEOs' agenda. In fact, based on our research with CEOs and industry leaders across the world, these are the four items that have merged as part of that agenda. First, addressing new customer requirements Delivering empathy at a scale is the new benchmark for organizations, particularly as millennials are entering their peak earning years. Also moving operations from efficiency to market-driven objectives and engendering trust with customers. Now, when you think about capabilities, new capabilities are going to be needed uh, to succeed, of course, such as data and becoming an intelligent organization. Agile DevOps and implementing new work models with the organization that emphasize performance over productivity. Critical infrastructure is often seen as an IT play, but this is actually gaining attention from CEOs or gaining significant attention. In fact, our uh, latest CEO survey shows that 64% of CEOs consider infrastructure and connectivity as critical to compete in the digital economy. This is key to ensure reliable digital services and experiences and to create the pervasive experiences digital customers do expect today. Lastly, industry ecosystems, and this is really the most challenging agenda item. So to succeed, CEOs need to drive ecosystem-based innovations. CEOs are looking into cross-industry partnerships to enter new market spaces and generate new revenue streams. As a result of these, leading organizations across the world are reinventing their approaches around digital transformation and racing towards a new call standard, and this is what we call the future enterprise, a new benchmark for organizations that aspire to thrive in the digital economy. The future enterprise essentially comprises of five distinct and interrelated dimensions. Mastering these dimensions requires a skillful execution of strategy, people, processes, technology, governance, and of course data. So on top of all this culture, this is about the ability for an organization to rethink risk and change. It's about embracing fail fast, learn fast type approaches, as well as obviously new digital metrics. Now, when you look at customers, this describes the ability for an organization to develop deep relationships with customers at scale by understanding a situation from their point of view and acting accordingly. This requires moving from personalization to empathy, developing relationships with customers at scale. 
when you think about intelligence, it's all about transforming the way that we capture, manage, use, and analyze data. And this is not only for improved decision making, which of course do matter, uh, is, is important, but more importantly is to move to data monetization type of approaches. So our focus here should be on leveraging contextual and collective intelligence from human machine learning networks to generate insight at a scale. Uh, regarding operations, we should focus on making the organization more agile and more adaptable. And this means move from automation to autonomy, ensuring that the process is able to be self-governed without human aid or human intervention, self-corrected or self-healing. And lastly, future work, which is about creating a holistic strategy around the three tenets of work, work culture, workspace, a workforce to ensure that we can shift from productivity to performance and, and of course value-based compensations or outcomes. Now the percentages uh, show how much of a priority these are for CEOs worldwide and underpinning all these, these are the three fundamental technology areas that leading organizations are currently focusing on. Digital innovation is about the ability for an organization to become a software producer that creates and distributes digital services at scale. Connectedness is about creating pervasive experiences by orchestrating connectivity across the workforce, customers, operations, and partners, essentially the entire ecosystem. And lastly, digital infrastructure, which is something that I just alluded to earlier. And this is about ensuring reliable digital services and experiences, as technology architecture is now the business architecture. But let me share with you a few examples of how leading organizations worldwide are mastering these dimensions and building digital resiliency. So Domino's Pizza in Australia is a great example of transformation, a company focused on driving empathy at a scale. So a couple of years ago, they launched an initiative called Pizza Mobile. And they allowed their customers at the time to customize, to customize their own pizza by selecting from hundreds of ingredients in real time. What was more important is that they allow customers to make their, their pizza creations and promote them online. If those pizzas were sold to customers, other customers, Domino's will share a slice of price, meaning that's profit sharing to drive advocacy rates, and the project was a success. So recently, Domino's has been focused on ensuring a adequate response to this crisis that we are all facing, and was one of the first to offer zero contact deliveries to reduce human interaction, but also they've been focusing on establishing safety practices, but, uh, but also communicating them to their customers very openly. And, and staff health and safety. So Dominus has been working closely with health authorities to ensure health risks are minimized across the staff members with mandatory staff training on this crisis on COVID as well as uh, daily communications. Now, Ramba is an Israeli hospital and a good example of driving ecosystem-based innovation and focus on intelligence. This hospital is working with startups like BioBeat and Corvio and on new trials as well as implementing new hospital and remote patient monitoring technology. Of course, all of that to scale on the response efforts to this crisis. And this is based on remotely monitoring and diagnosing and patient speech analytics. So if we look at operations, resiliency in operations is shown in the ability for the organization to quickly adapt uh, processes, assets, um, and production uh, to necessary change. So in this case, four is focused on driving innovation by using a collaborative design process. And there are several of these examples that we've seen emerging in the world, but I've selected this one because I consider that it is particularly interesting uh, from, the, uh, from the Americas region. So the company has partnered with GE Healthcare and 3M to redesign both healthcare masks and ventilators to fit for manufacturing capabilities. So if you're aware of these, the more popular PCAP uh, track where F150 is made in only 52 seconds in their factories, right? So now what they want to do is to scale their production of masks and ventilators to reach similar levels. Lastly, uh, work. And work is severely being impacted by this crisis from the workforce with organizations increasingly using more robots, AI and post bots 
the necessary changes to the workplace and environment to improve health and safety. So Cushman and Wakefield has been working on a prototype in their Amsterdam offices where carpet tiles can delineate a six foot radius around a desk. Also, it offers disposable paper mats that employees can place on a shared desk before laying down their laptops or keyboards. And in addition to this, a circular safe zone sign on the floor on an elevator will show you where to stand, something that we've also seen happening here across Asia. But of course, it's clear that those are great examples of leading organizations, organizations that have an active response that show a lot of that resiliency that I was talking about. But the average organization is not that advanced, so not having uh, a lot of uh, those responses that I just talked about. In fact, when we look at our maturity model for digital transformation, which assesses those five dimensions that I discussed earlier, uh, what we see is that despite of having made significant progress, many organizations worldwide are still in stages two and three out of five. So organizations in the left, those that you see on the screen, uh, or ad hoc, are the less advanced. And at that level, their business and IT initiatives are still disconnected and poorly aligned with their enterprise world. Also, technologies, digital technologies, are only used to counter competitive threats. On stage five, on the other hand, which is uh, farther on the right of the screen, as you can see, is where we see the most advanced organization. Uh, that's on the farther right of the chart, obviously. So from a regional perspective, U.S. Uh, is clearly the most mature region, closely followed by Europe and Asia Pacific, including Japan. So in a nutshell, when we look at the latest results of our uh, maturity survey, digital transformation maturity survey, and we've been conducting this for uh, several years, companies worldwide are making good progress, as shown, obviously, uh, as you can see on the chart, right? However, once organizations do reach uh, stage three, normally they get stuck and they cannot continue to make progress at the same pace. And this is because some of the challenges that they are facing do get exacerbated and they cannot move the needle enterprise-wide. So how do you make progress and move forward? Uh, in IBC, we've created a digital blueprint for success and it only starts with the organizational structure and culture. And a huge part of the transformation is changing how we work. So on top of the culture, an organization is a strategy, and we find the digital determined have a single strategy. And when it comes to financials, we see the digital determined do demonstrate the inner value that digital can bring to their businesses. And we also see that the digital determined have created a digital platform that allows them to scale on these innovations. So I'm going to quickly navigate through this blueprint for the rest of the session and talk about how you can achieve the goals that I just highlighted. So one of the most fundamental problems we see is that too many digital strategies are taking place in one single organization. So in our recent C-suite survey, we found that our organizations were either running digital as an impromptu effort, or they were running multiple digital strategies depending on the LOVs. Or lastly, they were running a single digital strategy, but that was only focused on short-term outcomes, as shown by 22% of organizations on the chart. These are the organizations that we call digitally destroyed, and it's no wonder, really. It is difficult to accomplish a major transformation when your efforts are divided. And the digital determined, on the other hand, they do have an integrated strategy, or even better, digital transformation is the entire business strategy. We also see that the same organizations that don't have a single strategy also don't have a single digital roadmap. Only 14% of companies do. And the rest are planning to build a roadmap in the next 12 to 24 months, or even in the next 12 months, or even that they might have actually two roadmaps. And again, it's hard to get um, the required focus when the, uh, the roadmaps and the investments are actually fragmented. Now, when it comes to financials, the challenge most companies are facing is their inability to demonstrate the inner value of their DX projects or digital transformation projects. These companies are not seeing a transformational effect when they invest in technologies, and this impacts their ability to get more funding for more projects. 
Currently, the most common benefits more organizations get are cost efficiencies, productivity improvements, or revenue generation from existing products and services. And this is really far from all those promises that we heard about digital transformation, right? Um, these are, in fact, only incremental improvements. And that's not really what we want. Why is this happening? And currently, what we see is that most organizations are only using lagging indicators to track the X progress. So I'm referring to real view metrics of finance metrics like productivity, profitability, top line, bottom line. And the reality is that while those metrics are fundamental to report to our CFOs, the finance department, they all really reflect part of the equation. They don't really help us in demonstrating the value of, of our investments in digital projects. So in IDC, we built a digital performance scorecard that combines digital and standard metrics to help you on achieving this goal. The reason why this is important is because you need to focus on tracking what really matters to your organization today. And the reason for that is because you can only improve what you can measure. So we are all being asked by our CEOs to drive more innovation. So how well do we really track those innovation initiatives across our companies? And the reality is that we don't do so well. Some of the metrics that leaders are using are currently represented on the slide that I'm showing you right now. So I would recommend you to actually take note of some of these metrics and apply them in your organization. The last challenge I would like to discuss today relates to technologies, particularly in how organizations use technologies to drive innovation. Normally, the need to innovate to stay competitive drives the creation of new use cases across different business domains or different lines of business. However, these pilot projects normally happen outside of the traditional enterprise IT platform environment. For example, it could be a predictive maintenance IoT use case in the after sales support unit, or maybe a cloud-based Hadoop environment for big data analytics in engineering. And the reality is that despite uh, these being a standalone islands of innovation, these islands often uh, deliver good value and, and potentially new revenue streams to your organization. However, what we normally see is that they are often driven by business departments outside of the realms of traditional IT. And hence, it becomes very challenging to scale on these islands of innovation across the enterprise. And, and of course, even more so, integrate them back with traditional core IT systems. So to deal with these challenges, many organizations tend to set up um, a separate technology environment that is different from their traditional enterprise IT platform. And this is what often we call digital IT. And this is uh, because many uh, executives within IT have been led to believe that they had to create two separate organizations with different platforms, one for innovation, another one for operations, each with their own structure, processes, governance, and metrics. And this approach is what the industry calls to speed IT, something that based on our research creates significant challenges. So this model of fast and slow IT, which is coexisting in the same organization, is outdated in the DX economy and the digital economy. And this is because these two functions are too different and the lack of integration creates massive challenges for the organization to effectively scale. And leading DX to scale is really the competitive differentiator today. So we recommend you to focus first on aggressively modernizing your enterprise IP platform, but of course also, also delivering fast innovation to the business. And lastly, integrating these two environments so that you can achieve the necessary scale. So we see organizations evolving towards a new approach, which we call the DX platform. Leading companies uh, are really focused on ensuring that their lines of business department incorporate their technology roadmaps into the enterprise roadmap for success as they build a new technology architecture that can address the requirements of the digital economy. So how should you think about the technology platform for the future? So from a platform perspective, technology executives should rethink their technology approach with a new type of technology architecture that spans across IT, digital, and business domains. So if you look at the center of the chart, let's think about this in terms of an infinity loop of data circling around an intelligent core. 
So on the left side, data comes into the organization through connected assets, your employees, processes, and other data streams that obviously come through APIs. And this data circulates through the uh, data core, which can pull out insights, and those insights will circle back into the organization as improved internal processes. So on the right side, uh, data also comes in uh, through the ecosystem engagements, through bots, maybe mobile devices, AR, VR, connected vehicles, and, and many others. And this data circulates to the data core, which turns the data into, into actions to be taken when engaging with the ecosystem. So this platform is built using service layers, and at the, the heart of this platform is the intelligent core. And this is where the algorithms, the code, and the models live, enabling the organization to collect the insights from the data. So what is important really is that data doesn't distinguish your company. It is what your company does with the data that will help drive that competitive differentiator, a differentiation. So the way in which your company builds the intelligent core will determine your company IP. And this platform will need to extend to IT, digital, and business domains. So the next layer in line is the developer services, which is where DevOps come into play and a lot of the app development. Now, when you look at engagement services, this is where you go external uh, with partners and of course suppliers and normally through APIs. Our orchestration, uh, this is about bringing everything together. It is a fundamental piece that allows for this change of data and services across the distributed technology architecture. Now, underpinning all these DX platform, you need to ensure that in building this DX platform, your infra is not only modernized, but also the point where you can re-architect for a skill. That's going to be fundamental. So, re-architecting for a skill requires getting the foundations right. The basic technology stack is not working as expected, then the rest of the requirements cannot be met. And this is about the hygiene factor, really, if you think about it. So does your tech platform meet the, uh, the needs of the business today and the ongoing required changes? And if not, then why not? And a key driver underpinning the development of modern applications on a hybrid, multi-cloud type of platform is the belief that these hyper-scale environments do provide greater levels of inner infrastructure resiliency than the organization can afford to build, uh, can, can afford to build out on its own. So achieving elastic reliability will require much higher levels of automation as we aim for autonomy and resiliency, which in turn requires much deeper monitoring since so much will be deployed at edge locations to offset bandwidth, security, and management challenges. So for CIOs and IT leaders that are currently listening to these, how can CIOs re-architect for scale and help the business in achieving its business transformation goals? That's the key question. So to begin, CIOs need to think far beyond being only a technologist. Businesses run on technology, obviously, and the role of the CIO is to ensure that the business is getting the most out of these investments. However, success relies on having the right organizational leadership. The CEO on the board do not embrace digital transformation in the important nature of technology in delivering business value, then the foundation for a strong CIO to build upon will be lacking. So this needs to be backed up with measures and metrics, acceptance of change, embracing risk, and being open to new ideas or digital mindset, which is something that I've been alluding to earlier. So more than ever, CIOs need to be open to new partnerships that can help achieve the organization's business goals and deliver business outcomes. So CIOs should focus on delivering on the new CEO agenda, and to do so and become digitally resilient, we recommend you to focus on the next three key areas. First, driving innovation. So leading CIOs focus on driving innovation by articulating a clear digital vision and infusing intelligence enterprise-wide. In fact, we predict that by 2022, as innovation becomes synonymous with disruption, 40% of CIOs will call it innovation, articulating digital patients and infusing intelligence enterprise-wide. Second, we should focus on modernization. Leading CIOs focus on aggressively modernizing and rationalizing their IT infrastructures and data architectures. 
So lastly, uh, focus on IT transformation, because leading CIOs focus on design and integrating digital solutions enterprise-wide. In fact, we expect that by 2022, 50% of IT organizations will have transition from builders and operators to designers and integrators of digital solutions that come to define every product, service, or process. So to conclude, three recommendations. First, start by assessing your digital maturity. This will help your organization understand where you are in the digital transformation journey and how your progress compares to your industry peers, but also can help you better understand the gaps your organization is facing and focus on tackling them. Second, set a single integrated DX strategy across the organization with metrics, digital metrics. This is because we can only improve what we can measure. We've talked about that earlier. So create a new balanced performance scorecard that combines traditional metrics like top line, bottom line, efficiency, productivity, but to also measure your ability to drive digital success. For example, by using innovation rates, supply chain optimization, using self healing assets, customer advocacy rates, or even data capitalization rates. If that's something that you are already doing. Lastly, while technology is not a goal in itself, and we all know that, it is actually the way to achieve and accelerate our business outcomes. So do create a technology roadmap for the use cases that you are going to focus on and the underlying technologies that you are planning to invest on. But also focus on the skills, because without the skills, without the necessary skills, it will be very difficult to maximize the use and impact of the technologies that you are implementing. So with that, thank you very much and good luck in your digital transformation journey. Thanks.